Hey guys, Ace up here, and welcome to C++ tutorial number 16. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, generating random numbers. Um, so you need a, um, two more libraries than usual. You need the IO stream, of course. You need, uh, and here's one of the two new libraries, CSDDLib and CTime. Okay. Um, then, of course, declare the main function and open the curly brace. Um, now, what we have here is just a, um, a for statement. And in this for statement, uh, it's, it's going to run 10 times first, and it's going to output uh, this function rand. Now, what rand does uh, is it generates a random number. And to uh, work out how it generates a random number, you need to imagine a big book of numbers and basically what RAND does is selects one of those numbers by random. Um, not only does it select the random number, but uh, it also starts at a random place inside that book. So, um, I guess that sort of helps to... I don't know, actually. I don't know why it does that, but um, it just helps to randomize the number it selects, basically. Um, but uh, there's one issue we'll see in a second and no thank you <laughs> um, sorry guys about that um, okay so let's try going ahead and running this F5 to run okay we can see 41, 18, 4, 6, 7 etc etc but let's check out the problem if we press F5 again we can see we've got exactly the same random numbers so how do we solve this? Uh, before we solve it we're gonna do uh, um, let me quickly dash down here. And, uh, wait. Okay, sorry guys. Just trying to do this so you don't see all this stuff I don't want you to see. Uh, anyway, so, before we solve this problem of, uh, the same random numbers, what I'm going to show you is how to get your random numbers into a cert a certain range, okay? So again, we got another for statement, goes to 10 again. And all you got to do is you do rand modulus 10. So basically, we're just retrieving the remainder of the random number when it's divided by 10. And that will give us the numbers from 0 to 9, okay? Because remember, if uh, if it goes directly into 10, then it, the uh, out outcome will be 0. If it goes just below, if it's... um say say that the random number was 9 then uh, 9 modulus 10 is 9 because it's one short of 10 so uh, yeah anyway I think you get the point basically so what we have to do to solve this is just add 1 okay so rand modulus 10 add 1 will give us a random number between 1 and 10 okay um, and let's go ahead and do this as well so we can see we've got these random numbers up here, they're still the same. And then we've got these random numbers here, and they're all between 1 and 10, okay? Uh, and if I run this again, you can see they're exactly the same. 6, 6, 2, 8. Run it again, 6, 6, 2, 8. See? They're still the same. So the way we solve this is we have to seed the rand function, okay? Um, and basically it's called seeding because we tell it, um, to start from a different place in the book, basically, depending on um, what the time is, is how we're going to do it here. So you can see we have this uh, srand function, and what we're putting into that srand function, you can see the two parentheses here, is time, okay? And we just have to put that zero in between because I'm not entirely sure why. I'm just assuming here. I assume time needs one parameter, um, and so zero is the equivalent of just putting null. But uh, that's the way you want to do it, basically. S rand time zero. Okay, and that will seed our random function, so it starts from a random place in the book, depending on what the time is. 
Um, now the reason you don't put this inside the for statement, and I just re realized this now actually, because yesterday I was putting it inside the for statement, and whoops, I've got an empty space there. Yesterday I was putting it inside the for statement, trying to figure out why it was giving the same uh, random number for all 10 places, even though it was changing the random number every time I ran the program, it was just giving the same one. And the reason being is because um, C++ executes uh, this for statement so fast it can do 10 uh, iterations in the blink of an eye that there's no um, space for the time to change so basically what happens is it execute it seeds basically if we have this inside here let me just demonstrate we have this in here goes to this one gets the time seeds uh, ran function based on that outputs it there shoots round and still the time hasn't changed so it gets the same and the time doesn't have a chance to change because this for statement executes so fast in 10 things so the rum the numbers are all going to be the same so we need to keep this outside um, and uh, that will just give us random numbers every time we run this program let me just demonstrate that uh, let's get rid of this space though uh, f5 Okay, we can see 161510. Let's try running this again. Oh, and again, they're between 1 and 10. Uh, 39910. Okay, so already we can see the difference. And, um, yep, run it again. 61107. They're all different, okay? And these numbers are still the same, okay? So that's just how you generate random numbers. And one thing I, um,. Not that I got wrong yesterday, but I just didn't realize, not sorry, not yesterday, in the previous tutorial, is um, when I was doing four statements, I used, um, for instance, in this case, I would have gone uh, I, J here, and um, K, and we don't actually need to do that. We can use I in all of them, and the reason being is because of scope. We're going to come on to scope when we look at functions but basically the only place you can't use i twice is in this situation where um, the for statement outside is uh, using i as the control and the nested for is using i as a control also if I try and run this uh, it runs which it shouldn't I don't know why it's doing that but um it shouldn't. I tried running this before and it didn't work, so, uh... Oh, actually... No, oh, okay, maybe it does. Okay, forget what I just said. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, see you next time.